Hello everyone, welcome back. This is chapter 7, part 2. In this part, we'll talk about why private sector under provides public goods. So this is public finance and public goods chapter. In this chapter, we learned about the definition of public goods. Public goods are those goods that have certain properties. They're non-rival and they're non-excludable. These are pure public goods. We also have impure public goods. We talked about these. Those are usually either non-excludable, but rival or non-rival but excludable so satisfying only one of the two requirements and we also have pure private goods that are rival and excludable such as the water in my cup if i drink this you can't drink it and i can also tell you no this belongs to me you cannot we built up the public goods definition then we also talked about private good demand and how we add the demand curves uh horizontally and we also talked about public goods such as missiles in the previous part, part one, how we add the demand for missiles um, vertically because you can consume the same missiles, same public good as a whole. So in the previous slide before this chapter uh, seven, part two slide, we actually started setting up private sector under providing for public goods. And this is what we are going to study. Private sector under provides public goods because of the free rider problem. So imagine two people, Ben and Jerry, just like in the previous parts, they're consuming ice cream and fireworks, okay? Price of both ice cream and fireworks are going to be $1 for simplicity, but fireworks are public good. Assume that Ben and Jerry have identical preferences. So given these parameters, we are going to talk about how private sector under provides fireworks. Okay, so Ben and Jerry benefit equally from a firework that is provided by either one of them. So it's 4th of July, let's say I am deploying, I bought lots of fireworks for 500 bucks and I'm deploying in my neighborhood, assume that it's legal to do so within the city limits, which is not. And all my neighbors are enjoying this show. So this is an example of a private provision of a public good. However, this is not going to be sufficient for the entire city. But going back to our example, uh, because the firework deployed, enjoyed by everybody, what matters is the total amount of fireworks, okay? So each person will choose combinations of ice cream, private good, and fireworks in which all marginal rate of substitution will be equal to the price ratio. So marginal rate of substitution is what? Marginal rate of substitution is marginal utility of fireworks divided by marginal utility from ice cream equals to price of fireworks this comes from chapter two price of ice cream so we assume price of both of these are equal to one one divided by one is one so what you're going to get you're going to consume fireworks and ice cream such that the margin you sold from each of them are equal to each other so both ben and jerry will set this Okay, marginal rate of substitution between fireworks and ice cream, which is the ratio of marginal utility of fireworks divided by marginal utility of ice cream, is equal to 1. So Ben and Jerry are going to just equalize the marginal utility from the last ice cream to the fireworks. Okay, whereas socially optimal level is basically adding this one, right, because they have identical preferences, adding their preferences together. So in the optimal level, this is sigma, that means add over Ben and Jerry. So socially optimal level will be marginal rate of substitution of Ben plus marginal rate of substitution for Jerry equal to 1. Hmm, interesting. Let's see what it's going to yield. With identical preferences, this is literally two times, right? Because Ben and Jerry are identical people, two times marginal rate of substitution because they're identical, I can, it's just adding two, two of the same thing. Two times marginal utility of fireworks divided by marginal utility of ice cream equals to one. So optimal level, it requires, this is very interesting. Optimal level, it should be such that they should consume fireworks and ice cream such that marginal utility of fireworks should be half of marginal utility of ice cream. Okay. So recall diminishing marginal utility. This is the optimal level. This is the best level start. This is individual maximization, which is not the optimal level. Individually, they are doing this. Marginal utility, I see. 
I'm just equalizing marginal utility from fireworks to the marginal utility from ice cream, which is going to give you this individual level will give you fewer. It's going to give you fewer fireworks. This is more fireworks. Why? Because it says buy fireworks such as such as that you reach at the half of the marginal in numbers half. To reach the half, that means consume more, right? Diminishing marginal utility. The optimal provision of um, fireworks require fireworks to be consumed until the marginal utility of fireworks equals to the half of the marginal utility of ice cream. So look at this. So let's say individually you're deciding, I'm going to consume, let's say 10 units of fireworks. And this is going to equalize my marginal utility of fireworks to, let's say, 30, okay? So 10 fireworks cause, right? My marginal utility of fireworks to be equal to 30, but optimal level, it says it needs to be 15, right? 30 divided by two, 15 units of happiness. So to get 15 units of happiness, instead of 30 units of happiness, that means you need to be consuming more firework. This is optimal, remember. You need to be consuming more firework to make your marginal utility smaller number. So my more firework is probably, let's say, 23 units of firework consumed drops my marginal utility to 15, okay? So at optimal level, it's required to have more fireworks, even though individually you buy too few, okay? So let's talk about real world examples of free rider problems, okay? So this is one of the most powerful concepts in all of economics, in my opinion, free rider problem. So provision of fire services, this is very interesting. Until 2013 in Australia, Fire services in Victoria. I visited the Victoria uh, state. They call it the region, you know, of Australia. They were financed by a tax on fire insurance policies. Think about this. Okay, every city I'm telling you right now in the United States, half or more of the cost comes from police force and fire force. Okay, so... Last year, in the city of 350,000, fire department responded to hundreds of thousands of cases. They come, if there's an accident, they come, right? Because there could be some fire hazard. So in the U.S., fire department is financed by taxes, taxpayers' money, not financed by fire insurance policies. Because if it's not required, nobody's going to pay. And also, people who don't have homes, you know, they're not paying for it, right? So up until 2000, it's like, imagine, imagine uh, our police is being financed by tax on protection. Doesn't even make sense. Okay, so up until 2013, fire services in Victoria, Australia were financed by a tax on fire insurance policies. Individuals who didn't insure still received services. You couldn't exclude them. In 2013, Victoria moved to financing fire services through property taxes in order to address this issue. So remember, flood insurance is optional in, you know, in the United States. I do buy flood insurance. It's extra $800 or so. That's a lot of money. But I know if there is a hurricane and if water damage comes inside my house, my homeowner's insurance is not going to pay for it. So I need flood insurance. So here we are, then they decided, okay, we need to just do it through property taxes, which is much smarter. Another example, public art institutions, museums that do not charge for admission face a significant free rider problem. For instance, in Corpus Christi, we have Art Museum of Corpus Christi. They do have some days free. And for a period of time, my HEB, HEB actually paid for all admissions. So that is private provision of public good. But HEB can't just keep paying for people's fees indefinitely, right? But some museums, they don't charge 
So they they recommended, for instance, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York has a recommended donation instead of admission fee back in this, right? So only 17% pay the full charge. If it's recommended, you don't you don't really hit the mark. So to, to address this, the Met has started charging admissions to out-of-town visitors. Not everybody, but just out-of-town visitors, which make up the majority of, you know, uh, the people who come. These are tourists. Another example. All right. So this is over 500 million unique visitors consult with Wikipedia. Okay. So the content is exclusively written by volunteers. And less than 0.5% of readers choose to contribute regularly. Can you imagine? Less than half percent. About 1.5% of non-editing readers donated to the nonprofit by the end of Wikipedia's 2017 fundraising campaign. Okay, so that leaves more than 490 million readers who free ride on the editor's efforts on donors' money. So I have never contributed, I'm just going to say. And I have checked Wikipedia many times. So to combat this free rider problem, these apps, you know, for-profit apps and other for-profit companies, let you use maybe twice. Let's say G- Chat GPT is a big tool, right? Lots of people uh, are using it. Lots of students are using it. We heard that Chat GPT passed the bar exam, this and that. So Chat GPT can be a powerful tool for you. Uh, but if I use it a couple of times without contribution, but then it says, hey, it's time to contribute because you can't ask me any more questions. That's it. You're done. Okay, so this is how you solve it. All right, in next part, we are talking about how sometimes private provision overcome free rider problem. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm obsessed with fireworks and I'm a rich person. And I'm willing to spend half a million dollars for the best fireworks show. Or I'm a super rich person, like the Iron Man person, right? So I am the Iron Man and I am super rich. Guess what? I'm going to protect the entire country. I am wanting to protect the country. So maybe I can over... Can I fully overcome free rider problem? We'll see about that in next part. Don't forget to hit the like button on this video if you haven't done so. I am not tired of saying it. You watched this video, didn't you? Hit the like button. Help others to see this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel so you learn more economics every day. I'll see you in part three. Bye, folks.